For me, the last 35 years in sport has been a real revelation of what and how I have been wrong so many times. For me, this was the year 2015, the month, April. I was coaching a young group of children. And a particular incident changed my very perception of sport. For me, in the last 35 odd years, sport has been about picking talent and producing results. When I was a player, also, I would really think that sport belongs to professional. Sport belongs to people who take this as their career. It is the most important thing. I pursued this as a passion and got some fantastic results. I went on from just starting as a hobby, more so because my mother wanted me not to get her and me into trouble by breaking window panes. She said, let's send him to the stadium. I played badminton because I didn't get admission in the cricket class. And I played badminton because when my parents walked out of the tennis ground, they saw too many cars parked outside. And I also continued to play the sport because I failed an engineering exam and my parents said, you can play one more year of sport. But then I practiced religiously and achieved some results which have made me a player and also followed it by a coaching career. Where the very idea for me was to have a group of kids, pick the best kid, train them insanely. To put just things in perspective, our training would mean that I'm spending literally four and a half hours a day on one kid. I would get up in the morning, I've spent, I would get up at 3.45 in the morning every day, reach the stadium at 4.15 in the morning, and I had kids waiting for me. Pick those kids, train them for an hour and a half, again bring them back at 9 o'clock, train them for an hour and a half, and again bring them back in the evening to train them one and a half hours again. Religiously over 8 to 10 years and that's when we got the best results. And for me the idea of sport was it belongs to these. I've gone on thinking for the longest period in time that sport is super important for us because it makes our country's flag fly in another land if necessary. British would have conquered us but in the Commonwealth Games more than 100 times the Indian flag was hoisted in England and that is what I felt was very important for our country. <laughs> but this particular instance in 2015 was not about this. I was training young kids and I threw a shuttle to a ch child, a 13-year-old girl. All she needed to do was catch and throw the shuttle back. She fumbled and I said, come on, you can't be missing this. I've thrown it from five feet away. And she, I said, you just need to focus better. And I threw the next one and she fumbled and she missed the second one. There were many other kids in class. I moved on. I just said, you need to focus better and moved on. She came back to me with this question after the class. She said, sir, teach me how to catch. And this for me changed my entire perspective of sport and life as well. For me, this incident is something I can never forget. 
because the very idea of what sport was had changed. It was, and I started to question things about sport, which are they real? Now, a statement which makes me talk us, all of us have taken up sport builds money. Fantastic. I think a statement which we don't say is wrong. If I have 10 kids and if there is one winner, he feels confident, good. The nine of them who are rejected in that class, what is their level of confidence? That started to bother me. I started to look at things not from the outside, but a little deeper inside. I reflected back to my class, to my maths class, to my physical education class. I remember as a kid, I was strong, I was able to play sport and I was athletic, so I could play multiple sport. So when the team was picked up for handball, for basketball, for badminton, for cricket, for running, everybody said, Gopi is on my team. Everybody wanted me on their team. In the class of 50, five of us would be in all teams. There were 45 of them who were being rejected on each class. I compared it to how I felt in the maths class. I would keep missing classes because I would be going and playing matches in tournaments and maths was always going over my head. I couldn't make the head or tail of it. And the teacher would say, Gopi. And typical day would be I would get up at 4 in the morning, 4.30 in the morning. And I had to study loudly so that my mother could hear me in the bedroom. For one hour, if I studied, then she allowed me to go and play badminton. And badminton was important for me. So I would study very loudly. And then I would go play till 8 o'clock, somehow manage to get to my school. And then at 9, I'm tired already. The first session, I would still keep be awake. And the second and the third class was the maths class. I would mostly be sleeping. Being tall, I would be, I can't be, I was at the back and the teacher put me in the front. I figured a way of sleeping like this. And I was sleeping most of the time. The teacher would say, out, <laughs> you go out. So half the time in my maths class, I would be kneeling outside. I felt rejected in the maths class. And today when you look at me, and say math, I'm saying, Bob, not for me. <laughs> I started to relate this to the other kids who felt rejected out of their physical education class and what would be their attitude towards sport and fitness and physical activity. And it started to bother me. And it's, I started to question that. Is sport for the five people who are endowed or is sport important for everybody? And that started to bother me. There's another statement which is made. Sports builds team spirit. We all take this as given. Yes, it's something which we all say is true, 100%. Because I pass to my teammate who scores a goal. So it's correct. Sports builds team spirit. But is it the means to another end? I've, I pass it to my teammate who wins, make us win. Or will I think of myself, I will sacrifice my slot in the team because somebody is else is better than me so that the team wins. That started to bother me and I looked at examples. We see people not giving up their place in the team when they don't deserve to be in the team for long. Is it true? And that started to bother me. So things like this, which are fundamental, started to bother me. And I started to look at sport very differently. I would go on and question fundamental things about sport. 
all of us in the room can be athletically endowed in whatever but if we have to jump and dunk a basketball maybe our heights are not enough and i started to bother me why is the basketball at that height and not at another height why is the medals in some of the sports so tilted towards a few countries which manage the governance of sport and today when we talk about pride and india and every olympics this comes up we as a nation of 1.4 billion and we get few medals and we associate pride with sport and if we lose do we become a lesser nation and that started to bother me so today after going through this entire cycle in the last few years and i having produced champions at the world and olympic level i have seen champions in sport broken in life and that started to bother me because on the journey you have many who are broken but people who reach the highest level also are broken and this is something which was very worry and somewhere i thought it's very important to share this idea we need to relook at the way we have done sport if numbers addition subtractions multiplications in some sequence was numerical literacy and if alphabets word sentences in some sequence was alphabetical literacy then maybe crawling walking running throwing jumping in some sequence would be called physical literacy we as a nation have grown alphabetically and numerically over the last 30 years but we have actually gone down physically in the last 30 years so much so that our parents are more physically literate than us and our grandparents are more physically literate than us and today the next generation i don't know how it will be so it comes me to this point is sport important and relevant and i would share this each one of us should have the ability to throw a ball as high as it can go to run as fast as we can run to jump as high as we can it's what we can not better than somebody else or competing with some peers i think the idea is to explore the length and breadth of our physical being to max out the length and breadth of what we can do from the physical being and i think that is very important for sport it is not to win the medals alone but this is what is more important than even winning the medals and that for me started to think why sport is important. the second thing which i think sport teaches and not many other things and and going back to that first point i think it's very critical that we need to look at this because if we, if we can't explore the length and breadth of our physical being how can we be visionaries on the mental side i think it's very important that each one of us has to look at that and that is very very important. the second aspect of sport is life lessons if we lose in an academic career what do we do nobody tells us who's the loser in class the university doesn't advertise its failures we are protected from public failure sport is where two 10 year old kids can come play and publicly one of them is going to lose and imagine if he can come out of that loss 
and figures a way out at a young age. That is the life lesson which sports gives us, which nothing else gives us. And that's the reason why we should play sport. Today, we can talk about many things and I'm not talking about professional sport, a sport where an Olympic sport is a professional sport. I'm talking about general sport. If 10 people, 10 students were to go out and play, one says I will play football, one says I'll play cricket, somebody says I'll play hide and seek, somebody else says chore police, and they're talking and they're deciding what to play. And you have, you put forward saying, nahi, cricket mein maza hai, nahi, football mein maza hai. Somebody is saying, no, we lead under mein maza hai. Your ability to converse and to actually portray what you think is right in a conversation comes through sport. And this is not even professional organized sport. This is fun sport. And somebody wants to play cricket, but somebody, it, the decision of that group is to play football. And you listen to that. Is it not what life is? We might think of something, but the management wants us or the team wants us or the family wants us to do something else. I think the ability to adapt is something which actually sport teaches us. That is the reason we need to play sport. Today, more than ever, for many kids who are privileged, sport is very critical because you could come driving out of a Mercedes Benz in a chauffeur driven car, but a kid in the slum without a shoe can beat you to it. There's no lesson in equality which is needed more than this to tell you who you are. Because in many things in life, the starting point is not the same. But here on the field, you have a choice. And I think that is the reason why we play, we should be playing sport. Today, I'll be pitching for sport and not asking or talking about the five who play sport and the five who win medals for for this team. I'm talking about the 45 other kids in class. And the only way we're going to succeed is when the last person in class has a positive experience of sport. And I think that is very important, not for sport uh, alone, for the career, but for life. And I think this is where I like.